What do y'all think about generational wealth? You hear about you hear about generational wealth, right? That's a good thing, right? We <clears throat> we need to put ourselves in a position to create generational wealth. Dickens in the church. Will you say amen that we need, <laughs> we need generational wealth? <laughs> On the surface, that sounds good, don't it? Dr. Boyce Watkins, that's one of his talking points. Is you you know people we have to we have to get out here and create generational uh, wealth. Here's your problem. Here's your problem with generational wealth. Generational wealth is unnatural. It is an unnatural behavior. There's no animal, there's no fish, there's no reptile, there's no worms. Show me in nature where you have generational wealth. Any animal, any life. Each generation must fend for itself. There's no squirrels in a tree hoarding all these nuts. I'm saving these nuts for my future generation, so they don't have to go out and hunt for the nuts like I do, you know, generational wealth. It's unnatural. Generational wealth is a form of hoarding. You're taking resources, put in one spot, and it cannot be used for the whole. If money was old beer cans and socks and somebody was hoarding that in their house, you would consider that a mental problem, right? Oh, they hoarding all those uh, beer cans and dirty socks. That's hoarding, right? But if you hoard money, cash money, diamonds, gold, whatever, that's all right. So what is the difference? Hoarding is hoarding. How come money gets a pass, generational wealth, but socks and beer cans, you look down upon, that's trash, that's garbage. It's both hoarding. You're denying others the ability and the right to try to use that money. The children of generational wealth, what do they do for society? The deacon already, the deacon, the deacon uh, in the chat room already made a comment on it, which is true. What do rich people what do people with generations, the children, what do they add and bring to society? They bring a sense of entitlement. 
I'm superior. I'm better. Laziness. They bring nothing to society. It was some, it was some children because they were inheritors of this generation of wealth. They were so boring, they were so bored, they decided to go around killing people. They didn't have nothing else to do. They didn't have to work, they didn't, didn't go to school, they didn't, a sense of entitlement. They was bored. So they got together as a group. I wonder how it feel to kill somebody. And they went out and murdered people. They have no purpose, no desire. A life of leisure. Living a life of leisure is unnatural. There's no worm, there's no fly, there's no bat, there's no deer. Nobody lives a life of leisure. Life is about work. You're going to get enough leisure when you die. When you die, plenty of leisure. You don't have to worry about it no more. And in, or and in order for you, for those to express that generational wealth, somebody is going to have to be a slave. Somebody is going to have to be the one to do the actual work. Because those, those who are the inheritors of generational wealth, they don't plan to do it. So there's got to be, there's still going to have to be somebody on the low level to do the real work. Life is about work, 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 work. In nature, it's about work, work, work. When you look at the animals, even in your backyard, constant movement, looking for food, doing something, digging a hole, constant work, work, work. Life of leisure. The only one who wants a life of leisure are those who are in a slave system. How are you going to be leisure when there's work to do? Who's going to cook the food? Who's going to make the shoes? Who's going to clean the tub? Somebody got to do the real work. You cannot live a life of leisure without somebody doing the work because work has to be done. Somebody has to grow the food. Somebody got to feed the chicken, milk the cows, drive the trucks. Who's going to do all this? We get caught up because it sounds good. We get caught up because we want to copy the oppressor. We want to copy the people that put us in a shabby condition. We want to be like them. I don't want to be like them. You won't change, but don't want to change. <clears throat> we want to we want to spend the begin the beginning of this year in a healing process. We're healing, y'all. And if I go off the path, make sure y'all put me where I need to be. This is about the healing. We're not talking about those people last year. May old acquaintance be forgot. <laughs> Just act to say <laughs> Talk about squirrel. <laughs> he, he said they be hiding. <laughs> the nuts in their mouth. That's temporary. That's just so they can carry it, put it away, 
for the winter. That's how, you know, that's how uh, squirrels do. They, uh, they take the nuts and hide them because that's what they, the nuts or whatever else. And uh, that's how they survive the winter. But they don't, they don't hoard things and bees and ants, they don't hoard things. They put things away for bad times. That's, there's a difference between hoarding and trying to prepare yourself for the winter or for a drought or some, some bad time. I do too. I, I love the squirrels in the neighborhood. <laughs> you know, so I just learned. I just learned that squirrels eat meat. Do y'all know that? Squirrels eat meat. I thought the only thing squirrels eat is nuts. I thought they eat nuts and vegetables. I seen some, I seen some squirrels tear up some chicken legs. I'm like, what? <laughs> I thought nut, I thought squirrels was vegetarian. <laughs> I saw some squirrels and these big old black blackbirds. They was fighting over some some chicken, some chicken legs and stuff. I'm like, wow. And I saw this with my own eyes. I, so don't tell me that squirrels, squirrels is uh, vegetarians. I saw them squirrels and they ate those chicken bones the same way they would do like nuts, you know, break the, and ate the marrow out of the bones or whatever. I, I don't know. They was tearing those uh, chicken legs up. <laughs> so everybody like KFC. <laughs> so, I love nature and that's that's the premise of the reality temple on earth is I base our understanding on common sense, logic, being analytical and reason, also the example of what we see out in the natural world. And there's no uh, evidence to me where nature or any animal uh, they worship uh, some type of spirit or some type of God or something like that. Um, so that's why I don't, I don't do that. I don't, I don't see that in nature. And um, I don't advocate homosexuality because I don't see it in nature. I treat people the way I want to be treated and I have no hatred toward nobody, but I cannot endorse I cannot advocate homosexuality and transgender and all these different things. You don't see that in nature. That's that's man-made action. That's man-made behavior. And it's unnatural. Also, you do not see in nature interracial relationships. You don't see that in nature. You don't see animals going outside their species. That's man-made. And a lot of it 